special treat because we had Shesh Fest yesterday teaching a music workshop in our music department and the students absolutely love them. So I know we're in for a wonderful evening. Um, this concert is a highlight of our year and uh, marking our 20th year of being in existence at the center. And it's a wonderful way to mostly end our academic year. Um, beyond our program of classes that we have for students at the university, um, we also offer programs like this. And as you know, AU is known for being a very political university in the heart of the nation's capital, and that's why a lot of our students come here. So of course, um, Israel being in the news all the time, um, and for many reasons, we do a lot of programs focused on international relations and geopolitical challenges. Um, but we also cover other aspects of Israel. In fact, two hours ago, we just had a Startup Nation tech fair on campus that our Israel Business Club organized um, and we co-sponsored. Um, and we have been having a writer series with um, some of our most wonderful Israeli writers and we're excited to say that we have Edgar Carrot coming this fall. So that will be a highlight of our fall season. Um, but tonight's program, as I said, is very special because we get to experience the virtuosity of not only one of the world's great orchestras, the Israel Philharmonic, but also to experience the virtuosity of some of its Eastern musicians. And the Eastern tradition is very old and uh, it's very different than the Western tradition, but equally um, virtuoso, however you say that. Um, and together they've created a beautiful and unique um, melding of musical styles, which is um, a wonderful um, way to experience the type of coexistence that exists in Israel in fields as diverse as medicine. And tonight we'll see the melding of those styles um, in music. So um, I am here not just on behalf of the Center for Israel Studies, but I wanna thank our co-sponsors of tonight's program the Department of Performing Arts Music Program, um, the Greater Washington Forum on Israeli-Arab Issues, and in particular, the support of the Naomi and Nehemia Cohen Foundation. I wanna acknowledge our director, Michael Brenner, who's here with us tonight. And um, I wanna say that while we're mostly done with the academic year, uh, we will be co-presenting Israeli films in the Washington Jewish Film Festival, which is coming up in May, so encourage you to check out those offerings. And uh, we will be having a brief question and answer period after the concert tonight. Um, and it's now my special pleasure to welcome a good friend and uh, a wonderful representative that we're very happy to have in Washington. Elad Strohmeyer, who's the uh, spokesperson of the Israeli embassy. And uh, this is the second time that we've worked with the embassy in bringing um, such a special experience to campus. So thank you, Elad. Thank you, Laura, and good evening. Uh, I know that this is the main course of the evening, so I'll keep it brief, though Israelis and diplomats can speak for a while. Uh, but first, uh, before uh, coming here, I asked Laura, who should I thank uh, to tonight? And she said, don't worry, I'm thanking all the sponsors. Just talk about uh, whatever you want to talk about. But I do want to thank two amazing people that really bring Israel to campus and do such a remarkable work to showcase the beautiful faces of Israel. So that's Laura. Thank you very much, Laura. And Michael. Thank you. Uh, I must say that it's a treat and special honor to be here tonight because today is a special day and I want to explain. Uh, on April 9th in Israel, we go to the pollings, we have elections. Uh, elections are very political, very loaded, uh, and I don't want to talk about that. But also, I think what a lot of people don't know about the Israeli political systems, uh, system and the elections is that we have a multi-party system. We have 
11 parties right now in the Knesset in the elections on April 9th. Right now we have 42 parties running, which is a ridiculous number of parties. And according to the polls, right now it seems like that between 10 to 14 of them will enter the Knesset. Why do I share this with you and why today is a special day? Today, we voted at the embassy. In Israel, we don't have absentee ballots. We have uh, two weeks uh, before, diplomats or government employees that are representing the country abroad can vote. So I cast my vote today at the embassy and the polling is actually already closed. It closed at eight and the, po and the, po and the ballot box will go to Israel, will be stored in a secure safe and on election night when they cast and when they count all the votes, they're gonna count ours as well. So it's very unique. And why do I talk about politics and Israeli election in a cultural night like that? Because the multi-party system in Israel, uh, I think the genius of this system is that it represents the entire people of Israel. It, showcase the, it showcases the diversity of the Israeli society. Uh, we can make fun of it on one side, but on the other hand, we have a party for right wing and for left wing, for Arabs, for Jews, for religious Jews, for Ashkenazi ultra-Orthodox, for Haredi ultra-Orthodox, for moderate right wing social issues, moderate left wing social issues, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have party for everything. Uh, everyone uh, find a place. And I think it's, uh, it has its own set of challenges, but it also has a beauty that we feel represented. And sometimes, and I hear here in America, when you have two parties, sometimes people feel that they don't necessarily represent by the elected officials, and I don't think Israel is that case. So in our Knesset, we see the diversity for better and for worse, and tonight, we're gonna see the diversity of Israel because I think culture is a bridge between people, between identities, uh, between worldviews, and while if we're gonna talk politics, maybe some Jews and some Arabs, it's gonna be very, very difficult. When it comes to music, when it comes to culture, it's a universal language, and that's the beauty of it. So I think that on our preliminary elections tonight, uh, before April 9th, to celebrate the Israeli diversity, the voices and sounds from West and East, uh, which is Israel, because we're West and East all together, uh, it's a huge treat. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, everyone, and let's enjoy the show. Toda raba.
Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to this concert of Sheshbesh. We opened with Longa Ajam. Longa is like a polka. I won't try to teach you too much about music this evening. Longa Ajam, and the composer, very famous Arab composer, and he's sitting right with us, Sami Khashibun. We're going to continue with a piece called Shibolet Besadeh. Shibolet Besadeh, Shibolot are sheaves and sheaves of wheat, Besadeh, in the field. So sheaves of wheat in the field, uh, Israeli folk song, but we've done something special with it. We're going to play it in a very Western style, the beginning, and we're going to surprise you a little bit in the second half. Shibolet Besadeh.
course, Shibonet Besade featured our flute player, Yossi Arnheim. And I just want to say that towards the end of the concert, we'll have an opportunity if you want to ask questions. Um, so be thinking all along about maybe there's something you want to ask about. The next piece is a um, very interesting piece of uh, Arab music. And I'm going to ask Aziz Nadaf, our percussionist, <laughs> to demonstrate the rhythm. The bars are bars of 10, and they're divided three, two, two, three. And please don't count. He's going to play first down beats and heavy beats and light beats for two bars. And then he's going to uh, ornament that same rhythm for two bars. In Eastern music, the low beat is called doom, it's the doom. and the upper beat is called tuck. <laughs> so this was the rhythm of samai, 10 beats in a bar, and we're going to play a samai by an Iraqi uh, composer, musician, who came to Israel beginning in the 1950s, and he had a long career in Israel in, in the radio broadcasting, the uh, Kol Yisrael. His name was Salim El Nour. Samai Kurd in La. Kurd is the, the scale or makam, and uh, composer Salim El Nour.
Now we're in for a little trouble because we're going to play a piece which you all know. It's the Slavonic, the eighth Slavonic dance of Antonin Dvořák. And we're going to play it with three Eastern instruments and two Western instruments. Now, what's the connection? The connection is that folk music is folk music, and Dvořák was great at writing folk music. In fact, when he came, to, he was for three years in America, and he was director of the conservatory in New York. And his best, uh, his closest companion was his librarian in the orchestra. The librarian was an Afro-American. And in the evenings, he was often a guest at the librarian's home. And there he heard the folk music of the uh, Afro-Americans and Indian population of the New World. He went back to, uh, to the Czech, what is today the Czech Republic, and then he wrote the New World Symphony. Uh, so he's, he knows what folk music is about, and we know what folk music is about from playing both the music of the Arab community and the Jewish community. So we're putting it all together now. Slavonic Dance by Dvořák, number eight. The, the arrangement is by Yossi Anha.
goulash with a little bit of hummus in it. <laughs> and now we'll do something which is a little bit safer. We'll just play straight Eastern music. The composer is Muhammad Abdul Wahab. And the piece is, Muhammad Abdul Wahab was Egyptian. He was uh, active in the beginning of the 20th century. And he was very famous for um, big orchestras, big sound of Arab music. Usually Arab music is played by five players. He did it with full orchestras. One of his most famous pieces is um, Balad al Mahboub, Muhammad Abdul Wahab. Freedom will call, or the calling of freedom. Yemenite folk song. Um, I should say something about Yossi. You know, Yossi and I played together for 35 years in the Israel Philharmonic. And he, he left the orchestra. He, he, he didn't go all the way to age 67. He left the orchestra four months before me. And he said to me, he said, he, about a year ago, he said, you know, I'm going to get out of the orchestra before you. You know, he 
just got a little dig in. Uh, and he's, and we just talked today, he said since he's left the orchestra, he's uh, teaching all the time, enjoying life, taking us on tour, he's organized this tour, and he's uh, arranged most of the pieces of music of this, this concert. So Yossi is the soloist. Now, there's something that most people, with a name like Arnheim, you're absolutely sure he's coming from uh, Germany. Uh, but his mother is not from Germany. His mother is from Iraq. Iraq. So Yossi, like this group, East-West, is in one person East-West. He's <laughs> schizophrenic completely in, in music. <laughs> so he is now going to be the soloist in Dwar Yikra, a Yemenite folk tune, Freedom Will Call. The solo oud was played by Michael Haroun. <laughs> the 
next piece is by Avram Amzalag. It's about the desert, and I just noticed now that the English translation of the composer is desolation, and in Hebrew we call it desert, uh, the translation would be desert scene, midbarit, uh, solo flute originally, and we will accompany Yossi on his journey through the desert. returning to a piece by our violinist, Sami. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between he looks like he's just playing a regular violin. He's not at all playing a regular violin. He is in fact tuned completely differently he, from our Western violin. And Sami is trained originally in a conservatory to play uh, European music. And on the side, he took up the Eastern violin. Today, he's teacher in the uh, Academy of Music in Jerusalem, uh, a violin, and he has often done programs for television explaining Eastern music. The next piece is a composition from 2008. It's called Samai Nahawan, Shel Sami Chashibun.
usually when a composer is at a concert, he has to explain the piece. And in this case, there's nothing, we didn't need an explanation. Now, I'm going to introduce myself before the next piece, because the next piece is very, very special. My name is Peter Mark. I played in the Israel Philharmonic for uh, 43 years. Uh, <laughs> the next piece is actually, we should dedicate it to Laura because it's a um, product of the last visit that we had here at the university, which was seven years ago. Uh, it's called Zafaf. It's representative of wedding songs at a Palestinian uh, wedding. And you'll see how the piece develops, as many marriages do. This ends very happily. <laughs> and uh, the reason that I'd like to dedicate it to Laura is because at the reception after the last time we were here, one of the members of the audience said that uh, I didn't give enough emphasis on our Palestinian background. And I said, well, I didn't want to, you know, make any political blunders. So no blunders. This is straight from a Palestinian wedding. And this, it, just like Sami represents the music of Israel and Palestine, this also represents the music. The piece is called Zafaf. Thank you. 
Okay, now it's your turn. And then we should turn on the lights. And if anybody has any questions, we'd love to answer. And yes, you have a question. There are a few CDs here this evening. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I play the violin. You're absolutely amazing. You're like the ensemble of God. God has handpicked you to play for us and you guys are beautiful. I, I admire you. Um, so I play the violin and you said that he's not tuned traditionally like westernly, right? Right, Sami, the question is how are you tuned right now? Just pl play your open strings. Oh, okay. Both legs, both legs. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? Yes. Do you improvise at all? Uh, Im improvisation is a lot of, uh, first of all, all of our concerts are kind of improvised. <laughs> um, in Eastern music, like when you hear Sami and Aziz and Michel play, a lot of their music is improvised. Yossi and I are good at reading music <laughs> because in Western music, the great thing about Western music is that it's written. And so as soon as you can write music clearly, you can write two voices. And as soon as you can write two voices, you can write 16 voices. You can write an entire orchestra with everybody playing something different. We have a different technique. We have one line of music. Let me just find... Uh, this is the piece that we played by Muhammad Abdul Wahab. We're all playing from the same piece of music and we're making, at, while we're performing, we're playing the, let's call it the orchestration. Everybody's making up the orchestration. And then you can also uh, add uh, ornamentation to this melody, or you can add improvisation to it. But that's a much bigger part of today's Eastern music than in Western music. At one time in Western music, uh, composers like Beethoven, Mozart, Haydn, they were great, great improvisers. And and even there are, there are famous stories of even in the 20th century of composers like Paul Hindemith sitting down to play an octet and he played second viola and they asked him where his music he was and he said, well, I haven't written it down yet. <laughs> so improv improvisation is part of Western music also, but it's also reading the, the music is. Can I just add that all the uh, long solos that you heard from Sami and from uh, Michael were improvised. In, in fact, it, you, you know, when you play without music, to, look, the, the world's, most of the world's musicians play without music. It's only in the Western world that we play with music. And uh, there was a, we had, the, we have another flute player who plays with, he plays oriental flute. And I remember one rehearsal when uh, he had to learn a melody. And Yossi played for him the melody and it took him one or two tries, and then he knew it, okay? By memory, but, which is great. 
But then the amazing thing was that we played the piece again three weeks later. And absolutely by memory. There was no, you know, he had no hesitation at all. He, because if you play without music, you develop the other side of uh, the playing, which is memory. Uh, we, Yossi and I, who sit, have sat in the orchestra for 30 or 40 years, we've developed the ability to read music. It's completely different. <coughs> Hi. I, I wanted to thank you all for a wonderful performance that I will not soon forget. Um, I have a question for Sami. In the solo piece that you played in uh, Shibolet Basadeh, mm -hmm. I, I could hear somebody singing in Arabic. The, the violin sounded that way. How do you do it? Sami uh, asked me to translate. He actually took some some part of the song and uh, he improvised on it, so maybe it sounded a little bit like singing. question then we want to play another piece one more question ah, here it is. Ah, I'm I'm tuned regularly G D A E but it's an interesting question because the the uh, the oud which is actually uh, the, fa the father of the string family is, a, is an instru instrument called Rabab. And it had, uh, it's a Bedouin, today only the Bedouins play it. It has a leather front and it has a string made of um, camel, usually camel hair. And the bow also the same hair. And uh, the big revolution in string instruments was when it was instruments started be, to be made of wood because leather is very unstable and when it's dry it's tight when it's humid it's loose and and the tuning is all different so oud is from the word wood and some uh, Michael's instrument is called the oud and when it went across North Africa, it went into Spain, and it was ca called El Oud, the Oud, which became Laut, Lauta, Oud. And the Lut is what we know. Uh, Sammy, if a question? So, no. He, Sammy has no frets. Michael has no frets on the Oud. The Lut, has frets, which became, went off into the direction of gu the guitar, and this instrument went in the direction of violin. Today a violin maker is called a luthier. Um, the double bass got stuck in its development. <laughs> it was a kind of, didn't get enough oxygen, I get, guess, when it came time to go into the violin family. And we're actually, the du double bass is actually closer to the oud than it is to the violin. And this is typical tuning in fourths for also the oud, unlike the violin, which is tuned in fifths. So that's a complicated answer to a simple question. <laughs> and that's it. So our last piece this evening is, again, east and west. And... 
composer is Western, Camille Sansan, and he wrote about a story which took place in the East, which is Samson and Delilah. Well, he had to figure out some material, and I don't think uh, Camille said, I think he went to Egypt, actually. But uh, when he wrote the opera and wrote the movement called Bacchinal, which is where everybody's drinking wine, he um, wrote a melody which doesn't exist, in fact, in Arab music, but you'll, and you'll recognize it right away but it's his original thing, which is a very typical technique of Western composers. For instance, Antonin de Vojak wrote folk songs. You say, well, they must have singing, they must have danced to that in the village. Not a bit. De Vojak wrote all of his folk songs for his pieces in the same way that Camille Sansan wrote the melody of the next piece. You'll recognize it right away. And then in the middle, we're going to switch into something which is completely a Palestinian folk song from the street called Ayazen, which is a big solo of Michel. And then we're going to end with the Bacchanal in the end, a longa, which is like I said at the beginning, polka. And then we all go home and have fun. Okay, <laughs> so Samson and Delilah, Camille Sansan. Thank you. 